Hello, Crushed Up fans. Thank you for joining me in yet another quick update. In la our last video, I showed you the new schema-based simulation subsystems that allow us to create very complex simulation systems via different nodes. Today, I'm going to show you one of those systems which is starting to become integrated and the effect that has on the player inside of the U-boat in your future gameplay experience. I hope you find this very interesting and fun. So let's dive right in. First thing you'll notice is that I am inside of the control room in the U-boat. On our right, we have one of our simulation systems that is actively running. This is the atmospheric simulation system, which maps all of the different U-boat components. If we zoom in on the control room, you'll notice that the amount of carbon dioxide in the room is increasing and the amount of oxygen is slowly decreasing. A human uses about 9 liters of air per minute. The air is set at about 20% oxygen and 5% of that is converted into carbon dioxide. In our current simulation, we are slowly exchanging a certain number of moles of oxygen for a certain number of moles of carbon dioxide. The amount that is exchanged is calculated based on temperature, based on pressure, and a lot of other factors. In the future, we're going to add an additional layer to the simulation to ensure that as you're playing in the game, if you decide to run or sprint or to perform other intense actions, the energy output of your player increases, which means the amount of oxygen you consume also increases. For now, it's a flat baseline, but it is fully integrated into the simulation system as you see here. So let's talk about how this can become very interesting gameplay in the MMO. Let's say you are submerged, all the hatches are closed, and you have multiple players inside of the U-boat or even inside of the conning tower. Over time, the oxygen will slowly drop, and we want to ensure that we provide some sort of visual and audio feedback to the players to let you know that the environment you're in is starting to become inhospitable. How we're currently doing that is by looking at two different uh, properties. One is the atmospheric pressure of the compartment you're in. The other is the oxygen saturation. So let's talk about oxygen first. At 20% oxygen, everything is happy. Your player is very satisfied with life. Now, as more carbon dioxide is expelled and the oxygen level drops, your player will start to become affected. I will artificially drop this down to about 16% or so, so we can see what happens. The first thing you'll notice is you're now getting some audio cues. The player is start to breathe deeply. They're starting to become unhappy. They're letting you know that you are experiencing an environment that is not optimal. If we continue to drop that, things are getting a little bit worse. The player starts gasping a little bit louder, a little bit faster, and your vision starts to become a little bit blurred. And that continues as the situation deteriorates, making it more difficult to survive inside of the tin can underwater. This adds to the anxiety of the situation, and it gives you feedback about the environment you're in. As we reset back to normal, you'll see that it's not an immediate reset. The player slowly starts to adapt to the environment. The vision slowly comes back, the breathing slows down, and eventually you're back at nominal. Same thing happens with the atmosphere. So if we drop to, let's say, half an atmosphere pressure, our player is very, very unhappy. So again, audio and visual cues about either atmospheric pressure or oxygen saturation inside of the compartment. You might be asking yourself, why does atmospheric pressure matter? Well, let's pretend that you have the diesels running and somebody decides to mess with the valve inside the diesel compartment room. We know that the diesel engines are always attempting to suck oxygen as you're spinning from inside of the compartment. There are two ways that oxygen flows into this compartment. One is through these doors, the other is through the main intake valve. If we close both, the diesels have no choice 
but to start removing air from this compartment, lowering the pressure, and your player will eventually get the hint. And we could see here our pressure starting to drop in the compartment because there's no air coming in from any other place. I will fast forward in the video to save you a little bit of time. And now we're starting to see our vision starting to blur a little bit. So the player is starting to become affected. As soon as we open the galley door, so if we look at the schema here, we see there's a pressure differential, 0.74 atmospheres and one atmosphere. As soon as we open this door, pressure equalizes. It's slowly flowing in from across the U-boat. The we have it all the way from the tower, and we could see all this airflow. If we look at the flow rates across the board, all the way into the diesel room, as the diesels are still using that air. I would be incredibly remiss if I forgot to mention the opposite situation. Let's say you want to play around with the high pressure system. You want to turn on the compressor and for some reason you decide to let high pressure air into the U-boat. Please take a look at the pressure in the schema for the diesel air compartment. If for whatever reason you decide to pressurize the entire U-boat to 40 atmospheres, you can be certain your player is going to experience that. Hypoxia and hyperoxia are two different states that we aim to simulate. And this, hopefully you can see, creates a very interesting possibility space where the simulation can drive a lot of the gameplay. I was able to expel both starting air flasks to get the pressure in the diesel compartment to almost 1.8 atmospheres or 26 psi. Thank you for joining me today. I promise this will be a quick video. I hope you are as excited as I am about the possibilities of experiencing life aboard a U-boat in a more realistic fashion with crush depth and seeing the impacts of your decisions underwater. Until next time.